Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. This is Abby with Abby Reviews and tonight we are going to be reviewing and recapping uh, the new episode of Chasing Atlanta, um, season 3, episode 9. It's called Redemption. It should have been called Confusion and Delusion because it, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was, it was a whole lot. So... Of course, we start with scenes from the last episode, and um, we see Jaylon talking to his assistant about how far he's come. Um, we are talking to, uh, uh, we they switch to the white party scene where um, Oliver was explaining about um, the rumor of um, Jatuan from We Were Born uh, having sex with uh, production, and that's how he got on the show, and um, we switched to Funky Dineva and Oliver having this whole conversation. And so, uh, those are the high points that we hit, um, before the episode starts. So we start with, um, Gardini and Q are meeting and Q brings We Were Born, um, with them and they're having this conversation, um, and um, tea is being spilled all over the table. Um, I don't know if it's the editing or if this scene was shot before they went to Miami and all of this drama was manufactured or um, the, something is with the timeline seems wonky because... The way Q was making it sound is like this conversation happened after they went to Miami. But if that is the case, Oliver called Gardini while they were in Miami when he and Jetuan got into the argument to begin with um, to set the record straight about what was and what wasn't said and who said what. Now, Gardini is acting brand new. Maybe this is how he gets out of a lot of shit. Just act like he don't know what anybody's talking about. But y'all bear with me. Still a little under the weather. Um, first of all, the way Jatuan, um stated the argument happened seems a little incongruous from what was actually shown to us. Now, I don't know if that was the editing um, I don't know if they're, I'm sorry, I have a mold. Um, I don't know if they were, if they edited to make it look different than what it was or what's happening. But the way that Jatuan is describing the confrontation between him and Oliver is not, is incongruous with what was shown on the episode when they went to Miami. Um, he said that he was like, hey, after the haze, you know, and he was like, I confronted him and he got loud with me. I don't remember that to be how it actually went. Now, Oliver's voice is naturally elevated, so maybe he assumed that he was yelling, and that's all he took from it. But that's not what I got from the confrontation that they had in Miami. Um, I got very much so that Jatuan was on, he went from 2 to 50 in like two minutes. Um, and I distinctly remember Oliver saying, he's like, you acting, you, you doing the most, you acting real out the way and for no reason and you need to turn, tone that down. I distinctly remember him saying that and he said it in a calm voice. Now, perception, your perception is your reality. So if that's what Jatuan perceived to have as it, if the way he retold this story is how he perceived 
It happened. I know they look at this episode, so I don't understand. I, I, maybe he told the, retwell, the retelling to Gardini before he actually saw the film, the actual confrontation between him and Oliver. So at that point, his perception was whatever he retold to Gardini. Because what he told to Gardini and the way it actually jumped off and what we were actually shown... The two, it doesn't match. The stories don't match up together. Now, um, I thought everybody was clear that Oliver clearly stated, I didn't say anything about you. This is what was told to me. Now, Jatan seems to have an issue with Oliver now at this juncture. Um... Stating that everybody admitted to saying something about him except for Oliver. Now, if Oliver has always maintained that he wasn't the one doing any of the talking about you or spreading of those rumors um, about you. Then I'm not exactly sure what it is that you want from him. You don't have to believe him if you don't want to. That is definitely your prerogative. Um, but his story has remained consistent and the same. So I don't... I'm not exactly sure. It's confusion and conflama and I don't... I don't I don't even know. Q is, seems to be super messy this episode. I don't understand what was happening or going over him. Um... It just, it just seemed like a lot of unnecessary drama that could be cleared up if you just get everybody in the same room and everybody addressed the issue. I could be wrong, but that's just what it seems like to me. And it seems like to me that Gardini, um, did the classic... Let me show you magician trick. Let me show you this so you don't see this. Um, because at that point, not only does he roll Oliver under the bus, but then he puts the bus in reverse and backs up over him by telling uh, we were born about um, the wand sliding into the DMs of Oliver. I don't know if anything happened between the two of them. Oh, my eyelashes started to give up the ghost, God. Okay, no, girl. All right. Sis, now is not the time. I just need you to hold on a couple more minutes. What you been, you done, you done held on most of the day. If you could just get your life for the last. Thank you. So, um, I'm trying to be less animated in my face, God. Um, hell, I done lost what I was saying. Gardini. There we go. So, as I've been saying from the beginning, birds of a messy feather flock together. And I believe Oliver is capable of mess. I absolutely do. This mess, I'm not sure. But I do believe wholeheartedly Oliver is, just like we all can be in different points and times in our lives, capable of being messy. However, Gardini seems to be the master of messy and the master of manipulation because he threw out the bomb about Dewan and Oliver to distract from the fact that he was the one running around talking about this baby. Um, which he admitted to on FaceTime with Oliver when he and Oliver had a one-on-one -on -one conversation and then yet again when he got on FaceTime with Oliver and Jatois was there. So if that is the case, I just don't understand why the people's memory short. I just, I just, I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't know what's happening. Um, everything seems real confused and I just, ooh, ooh, ooh. It's a lot of stuff that just doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. I don't know if we need to see some deleted scenes. Um, they like to put up receipts on the uh, T 
TV or, or and I'm watching it on my phone because I well, I was watching it on my computer because I was at work. I was I was working. Um uh, but I couldn't read the text conversation that they threw up on the thing and it's just the absolute most for I don't I don't know. So we're gonna move on to Oliver. It is time for the launch of his game twist. Well, the game that he is endorsing or branding or I'm not sure he's the face of or buy the game. It's on Amazon channel. Um, and he invited um, Jatuan down to, I guess, the photo shoot or whatever was happening with uh, the game. And so they're having, they're having a good conversation like two normal people who are cool with each other at this juncture still. But in their confessionals, Oliver is calling the baby dumb and that he's not able to can. And and um, at this point, they are having a very real and very personal conversation about gifts and talents. And, and I can't speak to this in any way, shape, or form because I'm not LGBT or talent or anything of that nature. So... I haven't been through this in any way, shape, or form, but I can easily see this happening. Um, where, you know, ooh, Lash. Oh, bitch. If you could just, I mean, girl, just give me 10, 10 good more minutes. That's all I'm asking from you. Okay, so... Um, and Jatuan goes on to say that he has been in situations where they put him in the back, um, he, and they've taken credit for his work. Um, he hasn't gotten paid for his work, um, just cause he's trying to get a foot in the door and things of that nature, or people are requesting sexual favors just for him to get into these rooms and in front of people to show off his talent and all types of things. And, um... I guess um, Berlin was having a hard time and, you know, I'm assuming we'll hear more about that situation. Oh, girl. That situation later. She might not make it through the review. Mm -hmm. Baby, just might not make Not this wonky lash, honey. I need her to make it through this review and through these several pictures I'm finna take for uh, the gram. Jesus. Okay. Wait a minute, honey. Wait a minute. I might have to take her off and reapply. Because she don't want to cooperate with no damn body. Bitch, if you could just... Ugh. Okay. So sh she refuses. Okay. Um. So we then go to Montel and... Uh, what's the baby's name? Um... They're in New York. Montel and Cameron. Alright. Montel and Cameron are in New York. Um, Montel is going to style at a um, fashion show for Fashion Week in New York. Um, and for all intents and purposes, and from what we've shown, he did a wonderful job. Um, people were, I don't know if he walked or something in the fashion show as well, but people were taking his pictures and all that good stuff. And a good time was had by all. He did a wonderful job from what I can see. It looks like he did a wonderful job. They had a good time. Everything was a lovely, drama-free whoop de whoop So, um, during the initial conversation with Gardini and Q, um, they invited Gardini and Q to their pajama jammy jam, Valentine lingerie soiree. Bear with me one moment, please. Okay, honey. There we go. If you could 
get your life together. That would be perfect. I appreciate you. So, um, after we see, uh, Cameron and Montel in, um, in New York and it's a success. We then see Troy going over to uh, the apartment of Aja Twan in Berlin. Okay, perfect. Um, so we see them go over to uh, the apartment and they have a conversation about, I'm trying to speed this up, um, about, I'm sorry, I have ADHD and things will throw me off, so please just pay me no mind. So we were born having a conversation with Troy, and they invite him, and they explain the Miami trip and everything else, and um, they invite him to the Pajama Jammy Jam, which is what I'm going to call it. They call it something super fancy, and I'm just calling it a Pajama Jammy Jam. I know, bitch. I know not. Get your damn life. Okay. So, uh, we then go to the Pajama Jammy Jam. Everybody's drinking and having a good time. There's libations. There's foods. There's desserts. It's had a Valentine's theme. Um, Jatuan is in some little red silk shorts and a red dressing gown. And it looks like a little black wife beater. Um, Kendra has on this pink. It looks like a pink set. Um... A little nighty with a robe. Um, Berlin has on a little blue, royal blue nighty. Um, Mattel and Cameron show up. Cameron, I don't know what Cameron had on. I wasn't really paying attention to him. Um, Montel was serving Winnie, Winnie the Pooh realness with this little bear onesie. Um, this brown looks. He looked like a teddy bear. Teddy Ruxpin situation and circumstance um Q got on a wife beater and some little silk shorts um Oliver was there and he was in a track suit because he said he'll know he scared he might have to run he'll know what's about to jump off so everybody's having a good time and laughing it up and drinking it up and stuff and so they decide that they're gonna play truth or dare so, first uh, thing is uh, they dare, what's the baby's name? They dare Troy to show the nastiest picture in his phone. And he says, I ain't no punk bitch. So, he shows them the picture in his phone. Uh, I'm assuming of his penis and, and whatever. And he's like, <laughs> and I showed them and now they all on me. <laughs> okay. So, apparently his penis is huge is what I gather from that whole situation in the circle. They ain't show that. They show receipts of shit we can't read, but they won't show that. Okay. I digress. Um, then, this is where shit starts to take a turn. Because everything seems fun and lighthearted. And woo, everybody holla at dick pic and all that good stuff. Then, Berlin turns to Oliver and says, truth or truth. Or, I guess he said truth or dare and Oliver said truth and he was like is it true that you was doing a you a home wrecker and you was doing the do with this boy's boyfriend? Pause. Excuse me. I'm sorry. What? Oliver looks absolutely unabused. As am I. I'm horrified on his behalf. I was like oh. Oh that's what we. Okay so we don't went light from light hearted to you accusing me of being a homewrecker and a hoe. That's what we're doing. Okay. Alright. Alright. And so Oliver doesn't seem to show a reaction at all. He was like, she wanted the tea. But I'm not answering that. And leave that man and his husband and they dog alone. And let them live and be in peace. Why? Ooh. You know this is being recorded. Somebody is going to see this. Nine times out of ten, they were a part of the franchise. They may be watching this season. Um, so 
why would you let sleeping dogs lie? Just leave, just let that go. So, Q turns around and in my opinion, innocently asks, so Gardini was invited to this foray and then he became uninvited. Why? What happened? You would think Q turned to him and said, so are you really fucking production? And which one are you fucking? Are you fucking all of them? <laughs> that is because the, res the response, at first it was cool, calm, and collected. He was like, okay, I'm going to explain it like this. Um, when I first got with everybody, um, I had two friends, Cameron and Jaylon. Um, I'm still friends with Cameron and Jaylon. And he's like, every time I see him, he ain't never turned on me. He ain't never flipped on me. He's always the same every time we have an interaction. Um, when he calls, he says, hi, how you doing? Are you doing okay? Um, I saw your video. It was great. You're, I'm proud of you. You're doing this. He's always affirming. He's been a good friend. He ain't never talked about them. He ain't never flipped on them. So when I was... Uh, doing this party and I told him that Gardini, I invited Gardini. He said that that made him very uncomfortable. And because you're my friend and I have loyalty to you more than I have to Gardini, who I just met two seconds ago and I've already realized this nigga's been running around, running off at the mouth about me. And I know what he also did to you. I uninvited him. The end. Like, I don't understand. And then... Somehow it just got kept escalating, escalating, and at one point, um, baby Berlin was ex explaining something about why he's no longer there. He was no longer invited, and then Jetuan, I don't know what was said or what happened, but all of a sudden he went from zero to a hundred. And with no breaks, and he's hollering and screaming, talking about he don't give a fuck about chasing Atlanta. He's like, don't press me about somebody in my own motherfucking house and who I'll invite to my... Oh, okay. I don't think he... I didn't get the impression that he was pressing you. I get the... The way it came off to the audience who was watching this secondhand is that y'all are playing a game. He asked you... Uh, an innocent question. And then for some reason, that took you to 750. And we don't understand. And that's how the episode ended. Now, in the chat while we were on the live premiere. I don't under... I was the only Ebony in the chat. I checked. And we were born told me... To chill out because I don't know any of the people on the show. Now I have never professed to know any of these motherfuckers on this show. What I do though is based on the information presented to me. Well thank you for returning my things. I appreciate it. Little black girl. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, based on the information presented to me as an audience member, I can go only go off what I've seen and the stories aren't matching. Good night, boo. And, um, you look a little, it looks delusion. It looks delusional. Like, like I, I don't know how else to say this. And this is the nicest way I know how to put it. And I'm the kind of person that what I'm always going to be, there's nothing for me to be fake or phony about this because I don't have a dog in the fight. Like you said, I don't know any of you. I just go off of what is shown to us. So what is shown to us looks, it looks crazy on your behalf. I'm just going to be real with it. You might want to go back and binge watch all of the episodes and then you see the, the, narrative that's being created because what it looks like is like you're a hothead who jumps off at the slightest inkling 
of anything. So you can't get mad at me for having an opinion about what is being shown to me because that is literally what the show is for. It's for us to watch and enjoy and have an opinion on it. That is what we do. Now, I love everybody on the show as a, a character or as a person. But write it according to the narrative that we're given and my what I know to be right and true. I just want you to make it make sense. That is it and that is all. Because right now, it's not making any sense. I don't know if we need to wait until we get to the end or if we need to get to the reunion and ask some additional questions or maybe they need to show some deleted scenes or maybe we need Kevin from production to come back and we ask him some more questions on a live. Whatever needs to happen. But the way that it is being shown to us, is not the same narrative that you guys have. And you could be absolutely right, but that's not what's being shown to us. And we don't know that. So you can't get mad at us for reacting to what we see. And that's all I'm gonna say. And I'm and I'm a and I'm a and I'm gonna raise my hands and I and I'm done. And I'm and I'm we're good. So that is it for this um review and recap um please like comment and subscribe uh follow me on the interwebs and all that that good jazz and i will catch you in the next one peace